F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the 2, and then close it up. So it's a little bit of a complicated formula there. Uh, but again, this is kind of our random number generator tool to, to simulate us out there trying to, with our stopwatch, trying to see the intervals between customers, right? So if I hit enter, uh, and there, there it goes. So I'm going to add some decimals, home tab, number group, decimals, decimalizing it. I want it to be positive. So I'm going to double click on it again. And before the, before the whole thing, I'm just going to put a negative, which will basically multiply the whole thing times negative one, enter. And so now we get a positive number. I'm going to double click the fill handle to just copy it down. And there we have it. So now we've got our, our randomly generated numbers simulating us out there just counting uh, how long it takes the intervals in minutes between customers uh, coming in. Now, if you look at this, notice what kind of happens. This is this is kind of the key to kind of understanding why the curve is this way with a line waiting situation. Notice this first one, we have 22, which is quite long. But when but then we had only one uh, uh, one minute, five minutes, seven minute, one minute, uh, less than a minute, three minutes, five minutes, one minute, and then eight minutes fairly long. So notice you have a, what ends up happening with these line waiting situations is you, you, you have some of these long waiting situations uh, intermixed with, with a lot of, of shorter wait situations is often what you end up with. And that's what's going to give us our, our common exponential kind of uh, of curve that will be that we will be generating so notice this is going to regenerate because i have that random number generator so what i want to do is copy this whole thing because this is my generator and then paste it one two three so it's not going to keep on trying to re regenerate the numbers so i'm going to put my cursor on d and e i'm going to right click and copy those and then i'm going to paste them in column g right click but paste it one two three so we just have the numbers, I can also paste the formula, I mean the format without the formulas, right click and paste the formatting so that I get those header formatting. I'll make column F a little bit skinnier. So there we have that. I'll make column C a little skinnier. And then if I took the average of these arrival times, I should get to around, you know, that six over here. So I'm going to say to, so I'm going to say then my my average or my mean of my data is going to be equal to the average brackets. I'm going to put my cursor here, control shift down, taking the whole average, enter. And if I add some decimals, home tab, number group. So you can see that the that the average we get is around six, although it's kind of all over the place, and we have some of those high numbers and a lot of and a lot of the lower numbers, right? We got this twenty six, eighty one up here, and then a lot of these uh, lower numbers. That's often kind of the case you'll have in like a line waiting type of situation. So now let let's let's uh, we we could take a histogram of this and see what it would look like. So if I for example, take my, my data here, control shift down, and I'm, I'm going to then control backspace and go back to the top. And I insert, say, charts and a histogram. Now we've got our, our chart. I'm going to call the chart equal to enter arrival times, let's say, or I, it won't let me do it this way in a histogram. Enter arrival times so i let it i let it choose the boxes down below so we've got you know 0.02 to 3.02 and uh 3.02 to 6 and so on and so forth and you can see what we end up having here is that most most of them are are grouped up in the lower range not a whole lot of wait time but we have a few that are way out here at 21 and 24 minutes and some that are even further out, which which is kind of what's so that's kind of given us our characteristic exponential distribution look here. So that's you. And if we look at this, we're saying how hey, that looks kind of like an exponential uh, curve. So let's 
let's then try to do this with bends this time. So I'm going to make column I a little bit skinnier. And let's put our bends together and do this in a manual way. And I'm going to use our frequency to do that. And this is going to be the frequency. Let's make these two home tab, font group, black, uh, white. Let's put, let's wrap it. Let's center it. And let's say that our bends are going to go up to like, to like, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's say 35. So I'm going to say from uh, bins of zero, one, two, I'm going to copy this down to, let's say 35. Let's go to 40. Let's go to 40. We'll take the bins up to 40. So, and then we'll, and then I'm going to do my frequency. Now I'm trying to see how many times and this, and this data set, these numbers are showing up, but notice they're not even. So I want to use a frequency, which is going to kind of simulate the, the bins, the bins uh, up to a certain, it has a range to it, right? So I'm going to use my equals frequency tab. The data array that I want to be picking up is going to be then uh, this data, control shift down, and then control backspace to get back up and then comma and the bends that I want are these bends. So control shift down and control backspace to get back up. And there's my, my spill array frequency enter. And so there we have it. So now we're going to say that, that one, and this is going up to and uh, including one, I believe we talked about the bends, you know, how these happen, how these work in a prior presentation. We have 51 there. Uh, and then two, we've got the 30. And then three, we've got the 31 and uh, so on and so forth. Now I can also look at the, let's take a look at the, to let's total these bends up. So if I go down to the bottom, I want to get rid of this last bend down here. So I'm going to go into this one and say, take that to 41, get rid of that last bend. And then I'm going to say the total is going to be alt equals summing that up gets to 300. That makes sense because I, I had a count of 300 here. So it looks like it at least picked up all the numbers. So that's good. So then we're going to say one more column, which I'm going to call it the percent of the total. And I'm going to make that black, white, wrap it, center it, and I'm going to take each of these results, the zero divided by the total down here, the, the uh, 300. I'm going to F4, absolute reference, dollar sign 